Hey everybody, welcome back, and we're going to continue working in Adobe Illustrator, and today we're going to use something called the Live Paint Bucket Tool. It's going to really expand our ability to do illustrations. So I'm just going to create a letter size image, and I'm going to get this Among Us character picture that I found, and we're going to recreate this in Adobe Illustrator that you get this a little bit arranged I'm gonna need my color and I like HSB sliders so I'm gonna switch that there and Pathfinder I would like to keep that out when I'm doing this kind of thing although I'm not sure I'll need it too much and I got layers okay so I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer and this is gonna be where I'm gonna do my image on and this one down here we can make a template we can lock it we can do whatever we need to I think I will make it a template for now there it is okay so now it's automatically locked I'm on my layer 2 or yeah and now I'm going to get my pen tool so first thing we're going to do is do the simple job of just using the pen tool to get this image so go ahead and zoom in a little bit and yeah let's just get to it here let's see so I'm gonna think about this for a second here so I'm gonna make this overall body here and we'll do this shape on top there's no reason well, you know what? For the live paint bucket, we're gonna we're gonna do it. Um, we'll make this all one illustration. Okay, so just follow along, and you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna get this little curve here. So I'm gonna drag my handlebar. It's gonna go here. I'm gonna get the curve. Then I'm gonna switch directions. And now I want to go around this shape here. So how do I want to do this? I'm gonna take this path to about right here. I'm gonna drag my curve out. So I'm gonna get a curve. And I, and I left the uh, fill on, so it's going to create this fill that I'm going to have to change at some point. But let's just deal with it for now. Okay, so something like that. Now look, I know this is off. I can see the line is off. I'm okay with it right now. I'm just going to get things in place, and we'll deal with it later. So here we go. I'm going to go like this. A little bit of this curve there. I'm going to go up and around. Okay, I'll do another curve there. I'm trying to do like the least amount of curves possible. So let's go up here. And get that all in one curve there. I'm gonna go around here and I'm gonna stop. Okay, like that. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Now, usually we've been uh, coloring, uh, so far we've been using the color of our shape to get our colors, but I want to do it a different way this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off my uh, fill there. And let's just work on this line a little bit. So I'm going to take this line. It's going to be, whoops, I'm going to make it a lot thicker. Let's see, how's that looking? Let's see if that thickness looks appropriate. It looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm just going to work on refining this line a little bit here. So you will have different issues to work through than I do because we all draw our curves just a little bit differently. And the line is uh, pretty rough from the original image. It's part of the look of it, which looks pretty cool. So it's okay if it doesn't match like exactly like the lines here. Okay, let's see here. So this is my foot that was way off. So I'm going to go ahead and try and fix this. I think I have to lower the point a little bit. And it just takes plain width. You just got to kind of play with your line. Get it to look good. Take this a little up, I think. Okay. This goes about there, and it looks rounded. So we can change that. Let's go ahead and select my line. And I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to Stroke. And hopefully you remember this, that the Stroke gives us some options here and how our lines can end. So I'm going to look at the cap here. I'm going to make it round. I'm going to make it round there. And it's not it's different, but that's okay. We're doing a Illustrator version of this that's going to be nice and clean. 
rather than the pixelated version we have here. Okay, so now we've got this shape here. Now, how would I want to make this? Now, do I get an oval and make it? I could, but it's a little uneven and has a little bit of a change of direction there. So let's just see. I'm just going to go ahead and start and see what I can get here. So I have to pick a starting point. And since we have a little bit of a change of direction there, I think I'll start there. And this looks pretty round here as we go around. So I'm going to go that direction there. And then I think I'll... One, no, can I get away with this? Let me see if I can get away with this. Yeah, so I think that'll work like that. And I want to make the least amount of points possible. That's going to keep all my lines being the smoothest. Okay, I have a little change of direction there. So I'm okay that it did that when I connected it. And that's totally fine with me. So let's see. Just a little minor tweaking here. I think I want that to be a little squarer. Okay. And this maybe up a little bit there. Okay. Not bad. Moving on. I'm gonna get this line right here. Let's move down. So I'm going to go around here. Let's get this long curve here that I'm looking at. It kind of makes a point right there. So let's see how that looks. If I just give it a little bit of point. So I'm holding Option now to change my direction. I'm going to go around. Let's see if I can just get this all in one little thing right there. Actually, I actually think it worked pretty good. Pretty well. Not much tweaking at all there. I think I got it pretty right on first time. Okay, so remember, option, I can change directions there. Okay, backpack. So I'm going to go out, go around. So I think I have to add a point somewhere over here. Let's see. Okay, look good. Looks good. And I'm going to go over here. Now this is going to be off. And I want to go past this line that already exists. Let's see. Okay, so now I can mess with it. Again, not so important that you nail it the first time, but that you get your points in place and you have like a starting point and that looks a little long. Or this goes a little more, a little further down. Okay. All right. So we've got the main lines in place, but we're not done. We want to draw a path for these lines here. Okay, so now what we're going to do when we color this, we're not going to select this all, because the way I drew it, if I select it and try to color it, let's try and add a color. Let's add a red here. See, it doesn't connect, because this is not the same path. And when you get more complicated drawings, that's going to be the case. You're not going to always have closed paths to work with, and that's totally fine. Illustrator has a way to work with that kind of drawing. So let's go ahead and make these other lines. So we're going to basically create a color by number kind of thing here. We're going to create areas that we can dump in color with a live paint bucket. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with something simple right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make this path. And, and the thing I want to do is I want to make sure my paths close. So I want to start like kind of where my path already is here to make a new path. But let's see if I can get that. But let me just start it here and I'll move it over. And I want to take this line and go there. And I'm trying to get this line here. So let's go ahead and move this closer to the path there so it closes off, and this one closer to that path. So now, when I look at them, these paths are closed. Now, we don't see a line there. We just see a change in color. So we actually want to get rid of the stroke. Okay, and I can see a little better what I'm doing now because the line's not so thick, and I can move it in place. Okay, and I'm going to continue that over here. So I'm going to start here. Let's go down. It kind of curves around. It goes down this way. Let's see, where do I want to make this line? I think I'll just do it here to make it easy. And go around here. So I think I'll do that. And then up. And I want to kind of hit the path here. So I need to cross my paths to make sure 
that when I use a live paint bucket, it knows where to fill in the spots. Okay, so once again, I just have a path there that you can't see, but it will allow me to dump in color. Okay, last couple paths here. Round. Like that. Okay, and now my final one here. Got this wonky kind of oval shape. I don't think I want to do it that way. I think I'm going to go there. And up there. And down here. Let's come around this corner and close that guy off. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and work on that. So it's such a kind of wonky looking oval. Okay. And now I've got all my elements in place. So let's take a look at what I have here. I'm going to select them all. And I've got all my paths. From what I can see, they look close. So you see that looks a little open right there. Okay, so that's the kind of thing you want to look for right here. May or may not be an issue. It might be able to read the stroke as an edge, but it might not. So I'm just going to close it because I can see it. I might as well take care of it. Okay. Let me look again. So I'm going to zoom out. And those look closed there. This looks closed there. Uh, so that's a little open. So I see some open gaps here. So this is the kind of thing I want to look for. It's so like this, not closed. It's not touching the edge of the other line right there. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up with the white arrow. Make sure it overlaps. Don't want to go that far, but there we go. That should be good. Yeah. Okay, let's see up here. I think I saw another one up there. Yeah, this line here. So not quite hitting this line. So once again, I want to make sure they kind of overlap. That way the uh, live paint bucket knows where to use, uh, what, what to use as a space to fill in. Okay. All right, there we are. I think we're ready to do the live paint bucket now. Look at the, One last look at them. And you never know when one little gap, like even that, could cause an issue. So let's go ahead and close that one, too. You never know. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If it's big enough, it for sure, it surely will cause an issue. That one, might have I might have gotten away with that one. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let me zoom in a little bit. Get this guy fixed there. There we go. Okay. All right. One final check. Looking good. Okay, so check this out. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for now. Yeah, let's turn this off. I'm on my layer two. Now, what I'm going to do to get the live paint bucket is uh, I need to select all the paths that I want to be used together. And it's going to make them into a group, okay? And you'll see what I mean in a second. But first thing I need to do is select them all, even the ones that I can't see. I need to make sure they're all selected, okay, just like that. I can check real quick and look and see if my lines are all selected there. They look good. Okay, now I need to go to the Live Paint Bucket tool. And this is kind of tricky to find. The easiest way is to hit K. And once I hit K, it switches from the Shape Builder tool to what's underneath it, which is a Live Paint Bucket tool, which you can also go by just, you know, finding it here in the toolbar. You can go here, Live Paint Bucket tool, right there. But K is kind of an easy way. Okay. And I got my live paint bucket tool. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now. And I want to look real quickly at the layer. So I'm going to open up layer two. And you can see in layer two that there's all these paths right there. And you can see them all there broken down. And there they are. Okay, now watch. Live paint bucket tool. I've got red. I'm going to go ahead and go over to this section right here. And I'm going to click down. And now things are going to change over in layer two. So go ahead and look here. And now you can see this layer or this group inside this layer called live paint. Now I can open this up, and now all those paths are put 
in a folder in a group called Live Paint. Okay, and that's now where they all live. Now, in order to use a Live Paint bucket with these paths in particular, they have to be in this folder right here. So the easiest way to set it up is to get all your paths together first, select them all, then click Live Paint or click on the Live Paint bucket to add a color and it'll put them all together in the path. Now this isn't permanent. You can add and change things after you've done this, but it just might be a little harder, okay? So let's go ahead and dump this in here. I'm gonna dump in that. Those are the two colors that are the same. And I want you to look here. So if I go here, and let's say I have a path that isn't quite connected. So like, let's say my path was like that, even though I fixed it already. But let's say it was like that, and I was trying to use a live paint bucket to dump the color in there, it's not gonna work, okay? So you can still go in and change things, even though they're already in a group called the live paint group. You can go ahead and fix things, use the same way you would if they weren't in the live paint group, using the white arrow. And going back to the bucket, and there we go. Whoop, now I don't have the color selected. So I'm gonna hold down Option over this, uh, I think Option or Alt on the uh, PC, Alt. Select the red there, and now dump it in, and there it goes. Okay, another thing you can do is you can add paths in there and take paths out of there. So if you forgot to do one of these paths, right, and now you can see how it turns red to show that it's able to be filled in. It so it shows you that they're red when it's got a clear area to color in. But let's say you forgot one of these, it's okay. You can still draw your path and then drag it into this live paint group, no problem, okay? So it's not permanent uh, You know, when you do this, it's just easier if you kind of do it all at the same time as opposed to doing it later. So I'm gonna go to my HSB sliders and make a darker color red here for like the shadow side of this guy and dump that in real quickly. Click out of it here. Okay, now I'm going to do his visor. I've already broken these up, so let's go ahead. Well, first we can just do white. So I'm going to select my white here. And not that we'll notice a difference. Hit K. Because the background is white right now. But if I had a background, you would notice. And here's going to be like a slate blue kind of color. So I'm going to go ahead and select like a blue here. I'm going to desaturate it quite a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and make it darker. Do it like that. There we go. All right. Real easy. Live Paint Pugget tool is great for doing a little more complex illustrations like that. And there we go. We've got our Among Us character. All right. All done with the Live Paint Pugget tool. There it is. And you can take these things out. If I, let's see what happens if I take this out. If I take this path out. There. I just took that path out and now it's gone. It's no longer colored and it's out. If I put it back in, I would have to color it again and I might have to take away the stroke and all that. So instead of that, I'm just gonna undo it. But you can still manipulate it. There it is, Live Paint Bucket Tool. All right, hope that helps. Hope you guys learned a little bit and I'll see you on the next video.